Praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Machar Wakakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of all camps, treat, teaching sensible things like non violence, mark of the beast, preparation. We're going to go to the book of Nahum. Chapter 2, verse 1. He that dashes in pieces is come up before thy face. Keep the munition, watch the way, make thy lungs strong. Fortify thy power mightily. That's to say, there's going to come a point in time. Okay, so this is not necessarily a, a, in relation to um, prophecy, but this is um, or prophecy to come, but this was a prophecy of before when the Assyrians and the camp of Nineveh were, Nineveh were attacking um, the Israelites. And this is the prophet Nahum talking about it. But as we know, things do come in cycles, um, especially in scriptures. So things seem to happen again and again with a different twist. So we can, with a spiritual eye, potentially look at what's happened before with review to understanding what will happen again. He that dashes in pieces is come up before thy face. Keep the munition, watch the way, make thy loins strong, fortify thy power mightily. So when we look at, um, he, who is he that dashes in pieces? Well, I did a quick search. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. O daughter of Babylon, uh, verse 8, Psalm 137. Oh, well, 7, let's go, start with 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that will order thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. So, going back to Nahum, we see that it's Yahweh, the man of war, who is the one who dashes in pieces. You know? And, and with some irony, it's written, keep the munition, watch the way, make thy learn strong, fortify thy power mightily. Meaning, you know, build up your defences against the law, which is a kind of sarcastic thing because you're never going to be able to to come against. You can't box with God, as they say. For the Lord hath turned away the excellency of Jacob as the excellency of Israel. For the emptiers have emptied them out and marred their vine branches. The shield of his mighty men is made red. So the second verse, For the Lord hath turned away the excellency of Jacob as the excellency of Israel. For the emptiers have emptied them out and marred their vine branches so you know they've been spoiled they've been ruined people have come and and and, and um, destroyed their lineage the vine branches is often seen as a lineage or or uh, a family a group the shield of his mighty men is made red and the valiant men are in scarlet the chariot shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation and the fir tree shall be terribly shaken. We've seen about these ideas of chariots of fire, and there's multiple ways of looking at it. You know, these chariots now that were flame with torches are on fire as per where's chariots of fire? I think it's Isaiah or Ezekiel. The chariots shall rage in the streets, they shall jostle one another in the broadways, they shall seem like torches. Again, this is the fire the chariots of fire that were spoken about. Let's see if we can get that. This is Second Kings, verse six, and chapter six, verse seventeen. And Elisha prayed and said, "Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see." And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and the chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, "Smite these people, I pray thee, with blindness." And he smote them with the blindness according to the word of Elisha. So as you can see. These chariots now spoken of in Nahum 
can be seen as the chariots of the invading um, heathens, but also chariots of fire um, to come. The chariots shall rage in the streets, they shall jostle one against another in broad ways, they shall seem like torches, they shall run like lightnings. He shall recount his worthies, they shall stumble in their walk, they shall wait, make haste to the wall thereof, and the defence shall be prepared. So yeah, Edom's going to fight. You know, he's going to count up all of what he's got, you know, that can he gather up all of his soldiers, count his worthies, and try and fight. The gates of the river shall be opened, and the palace shall be dissolved, and Huzab shall be led away captives. And this is about them going into captivity. She shall be brought up, her maid shall lead her, as with the voice of doves, tabering upon their breasts. But Nineveh is old like a pool of water. Yet they shall flee away. Stand, stand, shall they cry, but none shall look back. Take ye the spoil of silver, take ye the spoil of gold, for there is none end of the store and glory of all the pleasant furniture. She is empty and void. This is Babylon and, and waste, and their heart melteth, and their knees smite together. And there's that, you know, as a woman, it, when it, they say that um, that people shall be in travail as a woman in childbirth you know and the heart melt if you can't so scared and the knees smite together and much pain is in all the loins and the faces of all them gather blackness where is the dwelling of the lions and the feeding place of young lions where the lion even the old lion walked and the lions whelp and none made them afraid the lion did tear in pieces enough for his whelps The lion did tear in pieces enough for his whelps, and strangled for his lioness, and filled his holes with prey, and dens with raven. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts. I will burn her chariots in the smoke, and the sword shall devour thy young lions. And I will cut off thy prey from the earth, and the voice of thy messengers shall no more be heard. And with that, I want to close out, and so shall I.